The Big Island of Hawaii is home to the largest and most active volcanoes on the entire planet. There is no better place to explore how volcanoes work than right here on this island. This is a tour of the Big Island's spectacular geologic sites that are outside of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. We don't include the park's many geologic wonders because there is already plenty of interpretive information readily available. My name is Doug Prose. I'm a geologist and a filmmaker, and on the tour I will be joined by geologist Don DiPaolo of the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory at the University of California in Berkeley. Don is an internationally renowned volcano expert, and he has made some important discoveries about what makes Hawaii's volcanoes tick. This tour starts in the town of Hilo. You'll need the map of the tour from the website for directions. Have fun! Site 1, the town of Hilo. Hilo is the largest town on Hawaii, nestled by Hilo Bay on the very wet east side of the island, chiefly because of the orographic effect of the enormous volcanoes rising behind the town. One of the volcanoes behind Hilo has an interesting geologic relationship to the town. Don DiPaolo tells the story. It's interesting, Hilo is built on a delta made of lava coming down from Mauna Loa. It sticks out into the ocean, and um, that lava delta was built about uh, 1,700 years ago. And so it turned out that in between 1,700 years ago, the previous time when lava reached Hilo was about 10,000 years ago. Site 2, Mauna Loa Volcano. Mauna Loa is the largest volcano on Hawaii, covering half the area of the entire island. In fact, Mauna Loa is the largest volcano on planet Earth. It last erupted in 1984, and it has erupted 33 times since 1833. Just how big is Mauna Loa? Don DiPaolo explains. Mauna Loa has a volume of uh, almost 100,000 cubic kilometers, and if you compare that to your favorite conical volcano like Mount Fuji or Mount Shasta, they have a volume of maybe tens to maybe a few hundred cubic kilometers. So these volcanoes are enormous. Site 3, Mauna Kea Volcano. On the other side of the saddle road rise the stark reddish peaks of Mauna Kea Volcano. Mauna Loa is the largest volcano on Earth by volume, but Mauna Kea is actually slightly higher, at 13,796 feet tall. Even more interesting is the fact that Mauna Kea is said to be the highest mountain on Earth when measured from its base on the seafloor. From there, it is over 30,000 feet tall, easily topping Mount Everest. Mauna Kea looks very different than Mauna Loa. Don DePaulo explains why this is. It looks like it has acne. It has a bunch of little bumps all over it. That's because Mauna Kea has gotten so old that not all the magma comes out of the central vent anymore. It's popping up in places all over the cone, and it makes these cinder cones with little lava flows, and so it's pockmarked, basically, on the surface. Site 4, Kohala Volcano. Kohala is located on the northernmost part of the Big Island. Like Mauna Kea, there are many little cones popping up from the flanks of Kohala. This tells you that this volcano is very old. In fact, Kohala is the oldest volcano on Hawaii, and it is long extinct. The models for the growth of the island suggest that the volcano started on the seafloor perhaps 1.3 or 1.4 million years ago. And so its lifetime lasted over a million years, from that time when it started out until about 100,000 years ago when its last eruptions occurred. Kohala volcano is not as high as the other three volcanoes that uh, have been recently active. The summit elevation is just over 5,000 feet. So tracing the history of the volcano from one point, let's say 1.3 million years ago, it started out as a small 
volcano entirely submerged under the ocean on an ocean floor that was probably 5,000 meters below sea level. It took about 200, maybe 300,000 years to grow up high enough that it actually broke, the, the summit of the volcano broke the surface of the ocean. And then over a period of several hundred thousand years, it grew up to be a volcano that was probably um, as big as Hualalai or maybe almost as big as uh, Mauna Kea. Site 5, Palolu Valley. This is an incredibly beautiful place at the end of Route 270. It would be even more incredible to have witnessed the awesome power of the geologic event that created the sheer cliffs and rugged canyons on this flank of Kohala. Here we are on the north slope of the Kohala volcano. What we see behind me here are cliffs that represent the uh, breakaway scarp for a gigantic landslide that started here and flowed to the north underwater. So it's believed that this happened uh, sometime three or four hundred thousand years ago in the late stages of growth of the Kohala volcano. Once the cliffs formed, this caused um, a very abrupt change in the topography and also allowed deep canyons to form into the side of the volcano. The one that's close to us here is called Palolu Valley and there's a corresponding one on the other side of the fault scarp called the Waipio Valley. And uh, the reason that these landslides happen is that the, uh, the submarine slopes of the volcanoes are actually somewhat steeper than the sort of shallow slopes that you see on these shield volcanoes above sea level. And furthermore, underneath the volcanoes, before these volcanoes started to grow, uh, there was about 100 meter thickness of clay that accumulated on the surface of the ocean and actually underlies the volcanoes. So the volcanoes are actually sitting on top of this layer that geologically is almost like grease. And this layer uh, helps destabilize the slopes of the volcano and encourages these large landslides to form. Now this one is believed to have flowed a long distance underwater after it broke away, some 75 miles or 110 kilometers to the north. And this can be observed by sonar in the subsurface and uh, people who have gone down there in submersibles have been able to map the landslide underwater. Site 6, Pu'u Kohola Heo. This oceanside site is where King Kamehameha I built an important temple, or Heo, in 1791. The stones used to build this temple were transported with the use of a human chain all the way from the Pololu Valley, our previous podcast tour site, over 25 miles away. Imagine a chain of people handing stone after stone to each other, lining the road you just drove along from Pololu Valley. This site rests on a lava flow from the Mauna Kea volcano, which is not visible from the Heo. The lava flow is at least 65,000 years old and could be much older, and is part of what is known as the Hamakua volcanic sequence. Site 7, Pu'u Wa'a Wa'a. This neat volcanic cone, which looks small until you get close to it, is 3,500 feet high. It's actually part of the Hualalai volcano, our next podcast site. Geologically, Pu'u Wa'a Wa'a is a very unique geologic feature, the only one like it in all of Hawaii. This is an eruption feature that's about 100,000 years old. It's an explosive feature made up of layers of, of uh, volcanic ash. And what is special about it is its composition. It's not the typical basalt that makes up most of the island as lava flows, but something called trachyte, which is a lava that has uh, an especially large amount of potassium and sodium in it, as well as a large amount of silica. It's a kind of lava that's quite common in continental areas, like in the western part of the United States, 
but is very uncommon in oceanic regions and almost uh, unheard of in Hawaii. Site 8, Hualalai Volcano. Look inland from the town of Kona and you look right up the slopes of the Hualalai Volcano, Hawaii's third largest volcano and still an active one. Hualalai is a rather unusual volcano, as Don DePaulo explains. Hualalai Volcano is over 8,000 feet above sea level. The uh, city of Kona exists on the slopes of Hualalai. The airport, uh, the Kona Airport, sits on the 1801 lava flow. This volcano is the second oldest one on the island, uh, behind Kohala Volcano. It's actually expected to be older than Mauna Kea Volcano, which is less active, but uh, for some reason this volcano has remained active for a longer period of time, even though it must have started as a volcano on the ocean floor before Mauna Kea did. Also, if you look at Hualalai on a map, it appears to be a relatively small volcano. Part of the reason it's not so high is that after the volcanoes stop erupting, they slowly subside and their peak elevation becomes lower and lower. Site 9, Kaleakakua Bay. This beautiful bay is bounded by a steep dramatic cliff on its north side. This bay has a dramatic geologic origin. This location was a place where a giant landslide that became an undersea landslide happened. It's estimated that this landslide occurred about 100,000 years ago, and the evidence for that age is the fact that there are anomalous tsunami sedimentary deposits on other islands in the Hawaiian chain. The two islands that have the evidence for this tsunami are Kahulaave and also Lanai, two islands that are close to the island of Maui. They're quite far from here, over 100 kilometers away, but both of them experienced an enormous tsunami wave uh, at about that time. Site 10, Place of Refuge. This site is a well-known and important cultural site. It is a national historic park, and it contains a reconstruction of the original Heo built by a Kona chief in the 16th century. Here we are at the Honaunau National Park. It was a place of refuge for Hawaiians, a place of refuge and forgiveness. It's built on a lava flow from Mauna Loa Volcano. This is a re relatively large lava flow. It formed about 1,000 years ago, and it can be traced up the slope of Mauna Loa all the way to the summit. Site 11, South Point and Loihi. This is the southern tip of Hawaii. Look out at the sea and imagine another island about 15 miles offshore, an erupting volcano. This is South Point. It's the southernmost tip of the Hawaiian Islands and also the southernmost point of land in the United States. Uh, we're standing on a lava flow from Mauna Loa. It's a prehistoric but very young lava flow. And from here we can see uh, approximately where the newest and youngest Hawaiian volcano is beginning its growth from the ocean floor. About 30 or 40 kilometers to the east from here, underwater, underneath about a kilometer of water, is a volcano that's very active. Uh, it has grown up from the ocean floor about three kilometers or four kilometers. It's probably taken it 100,000 years to get that big and it will probably take another 50,000 years before it breaks the surface of the ocean and becomes the newest visible Hawaiian volcano. Concludes the podcast tour. Hope you enjoyed it. To learn what is driving all of this incredible volcanic activity, watch the PBS program or DVD called Hawaii, Roots of Fire. Mahalo. Mahalo.